Ramadan Mubarak to anybody who celebrates. Let's get started with heat. We know already that chemical reactions either release heat, in which case heat is a product of the reaction, we have a negative sign for delta H and we call it exothermic, or a chemical reaction might require heat, in which case heat is a reactant for the reaction, we have a positive sign for delta H and we call it an endothermic reaction. This we already know, <coughs> but we also know that heat is a transfer. So in the case of this reaction that releases heat, where does the heat go? And in the case of a reaction that requires heat, where does the heat come from? The answer to that is going to be the surroundings. And when that heat leaves the surroundings or goes into the surroundings, what's generally going to happen is that the temperature is going to change. What we want to talk about today is how do we measure the temperature change that has to do with heat. pretty intuitive that if, a, if heat goes into an object or into a substance, that its temperature increases, and if heat leaves that object or substance, its temperature decreases. We know that we can think about heat and temperature, or think about temperature as being the motion of the particles. We talked about that with the gases. So obviously to make those particles move faster requires energy, and in order for those particles to slow down, energy must have gone somewhere. But how much heat? Well, the amount of heat required to change temperature is given by a pretty straightforward equation, which is Q equals C M delta T. Q, we remember, is heat. Heat's going to be measured generally in joules. M is the mass. It makes sense that the bigger something is, the more heat is required to change its temperature. We measure mass in grams in chemistry. And then delta T is the change in temperature. We want to be a little bit careful here. We probably remember, because we've seen it a couple of times, but delta is very specific. Delta means change, but it more specifically means T final minus T initial. Final temperature minus initial temperature. Here's the wild thing about delta T. We will generally use degrees Celsius. It's our typical unit for temperature in chemistry. Turns out though, as long as it's a change in temperature, the change in temperature in Celsius is the same as the change in temperature in Kelvin. But that's kind of weird and counterintuitive, so let's just stick with Celsius. That's going to work fine for us. All right, so the variable that's missing is C. The same amount of heat doesn't change the temperature of different objects by the same amount. Some things heat up more quickly and some things heat up more slowly. And the thing that's different about those objects or those substances is what's called their specific heat capacity. An object's specific heat capacity is the amount of heat required to change one gram of the substance, the temperature of one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. That might be familiar from those of you who are in ROTC. There's a bit about a calorie. Um, yeah, so it's something sort of similar, but something similar to that. The units for specific heat capacity are going to be joules per gram degree Celsius. And if we think about the units on the of the everything in this reaction, these units here are joules per gram degree Celsius. We're going to multiply by a mass in grams, which will cancel out those grams. We'll multiply that by that change in temperature in degrees Celsius, which cancels that degree Celsius. And the units we're left with is joules, which is what we ought to have for heat. Okay, so the simplest way to use this equation is just to plug in values of Cm and delta T. Mass, you're usually, or, and, and find the heat. Um, obviously, we can rearrange the equation to solve for different variables, but let's start for just solving for the variable that's already isolated. Mass we understand, right? If you want to know an object's mass, you put it on a balance and you write down the number. Delta T we understand. Delta T you just use a thermometer and you write down the number. C is the one that's a little weird. C you're going to have to find some tables. You're going to have to find the specific heat capacity written down somewhere. So here are some values of C for different substances. The one that we will use the most, and you may end up memorizing without meaning to, is water's. Water's specific heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Water specific heat capacity is really big. 
Other substances, especially metals, have really low specific heat capacities. What this means, since water specific heat capacity is on average about 10 times that of iron and copper, it requires 10 times more heat to increase the temperature of water. And here's the part that can get confusing. It also requires that 10 times as much heat be released to decrease the temperature of water. Let's think about an empty pot on your stove and a pot full of water on your stove. If you heat them both for the same amount of time, the water's not going to be warm, while the empty pot will be good and hot. Some of it has to do with how much stuff is in it, but some of it also has to do with the fact that the, the metal that the pot is made of is going to have a low specific heat capacity. But once you get both the empty pot and the pot full of water good and hot, if you leave them sitting there, an empty pot will cool a whole lot faster than one that's full of water. We can also think about an aluminum foil wrapped baked potato. When that comes out of the oven, the baked potato will stay hot for a long time, but once you unwrap the aluminum foil, it cools almost immediately. Some of that has to do with the mass. The mass of the potato is obviously much bigger than the aluminum foil, but some of it has to do with the specific heat capacity. So if you have a high specific heat capacity, you need lots of heat to get hot, and then you have to give off lots of heat to cool down. I think of it like a big truck that's hard to speed up, but then it's also hard to slow down. Whereas something like iron and copper with low specific heat capacities are easy to heat up and then cool down quickly in the same way that like a bicycle can speed up pretty quickly and then stop pretty quickly. All right, so let's come back to the equation here. Q equals Cm delta T. I'm just gonna plug numbers in here. If I know what say, if I wanna say how much heat How much heat is required to warm a 75 gram block of iron from 18 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius? How much heat is required to warm a 75 gram block of iron?